What it do, bruh? Talk of the town, Nintendo, Doc Trey, still holding it down, still make the best games, and you know this, bro, it's the truth. You don't like it, you can have that seat though. Wow, this is crazy. So I'm going to talk about a topic that a lot of, probably most of you guys don't know about. So, when 4K TVs first came out, they were 8-bit panels, and there was no need for them to be any more than 8-bit because HDR was not um, available on these TVs. And because of that, uh, and the fact that a lot of people, especially at a certain distance, don't notice a huge difference between 1080p and 4K, and along with the price of these TVs, they weren't really selling that well. Well, when HDR came, which pretty much uh, required a 10-bit panel, um, people started to, you know, get more into the 4K TV game because, honestly, HDR showed a bigger difference a lot of times than the resolution difference. Now, like I said, when HDR came, so did the 10-bit panels of these TVs. But what a lot of people don't know is that there are actually a lot of TVs that are labeled as 10-bit that aren't actually 10-bit. So there are 10-bit native panels on TVs, and then there are 8-bit panels that are called 8-bit plus FRC, which aren't technically 10-bit panels, but they call them that. <laughs> so when I first heard about this, um, pretty much fake 10-bit panels on TVs, I pretty much assumed that this would be used by, you know, um, TV makers that release uh, cheaper 4Ks, like compared to everyone else. I was expecting, you know, like a Hisense or a TCL or a Vizio. I was expecting them to use those because, you know, to save money and their TVs are significantly cheaper than everyone else's. And I understand because honestly, the average person probably couldn't tell the difference to begin with. But then I found out that Samsung is using one of these 8-bit plus FRC panels for their Q90T. This is their flagship 4K TV for 2020. And it's not even using a true 10-bit panel? Are you serious? Now, they're definitely looking to cut costs because last year's flagship from Samsung, the Q90R, actually does use a 10-bit uh, panel, a real one. So this was definitely a cost-cutting measure. But still, this is their most expensive 4K for the year, and it doesn't even use a true 10-bit channel. So the way this 8-bit plus FRC uh, works is pretty much mimics, since it can't display the same amount of colors at a time, it pretty much mimics it, a 10-bit panel by a series of flickering and flashing to trick your eye into thinking that you're seeing more than you really are. Kind of similar to what the Sega Genesis did because it, it had a restriction with colors with 64 colors per second and they used some a similar visual trick with flickering to make it uh, the perceived color value look larger than it was. But this is this is Samsung's flagship TV, 4K TV for the year. But actually, I'll probably look. I bet you the 8K, their 8K TV is probably uh, not even 10-bit either. But that's crazy. Just the amount of... I used to really love... Like, I loved Samsung TVs. And if you would have asked me a year or so ago... I. I I would have gone with a Samsung TV. I was holding out for Dolby Vision, but apparently that's not going to happen. But now I'm I'm glad I switched. It's just it's too many too many things. 
no Dolby Vision. The the game mode looks terrible compared to the competition. And then now even their highest in um, 4K for the year isn't even a real 10 bit system. I mean, 10 bit panel like that's that's crazy. Let me know what you guys think in the comments.